Fibre Reuse is an EU-funded project which aims at integrating different innovation actions in order to enhance the profitability of composite recycling and reuse in value-added products. For instance, remanufacturing, recycling technologies and reusable designs are developed and demonstrated for glass and carbon fibre reinforced plastics, or CFRP. In this video, some of the techniques for demanufacturing composite parts are demonstrated. A mechanical joint between two composite parts may be realised by different joining methods, including riveting, screwing and adhesive bonding. Rivets and screws are classical mechanical fasteners in the automotive industry. However, when riveting or screwing composite parts, either directly punched or by a pre-drilled hole, the laminate structure is damaged and the composite strength is compromised. The bore holes may also be a starting point for delamination and produce point load stress concentrations. As composite structures are used for lightweight design, the composite parts are usually thin and demand a distribution of forces across a large area in order to avoid stress concentrations in the joint. This issue can be overcome by the use of adhesive bonding. Adhesive bonding is an appropriate composite-based joining method as it does not damage the laminate and enables a uniform stress distribution in the joint. Structural adhesives provide a high strength bond between the parts. No special machines or tools are necessary for adhesive bonding. However, the manufacturer has to follow a thorough procedure in order to obtain a high strength bond. In the first step, the composite parts have to be prepared. The surfaces should be ground and cleaned and it is important that they are free from any greases and oils. In the next step, the two adhesive components are mixed in a mixing ratio which can be found in the adhesive technical data sheet. Then, the adhesive mixture is applied to the composite parts. The parts are aligned to each other before they are pressed together. Finally, the adhesive is cured according to the data sheet. The adhesive used in this video is an adhesive commonly used by Invent. These industrial adhesives are often specialised for the structural application and can bear forces, which can be as high as the weight of a car. Here, a tensile shear sample is shown. The CFRP parts have a thickness of 2 mm. A polyurethane adhesive is used to join the two composite laminates. The specimen is pulled until the adhesive bond fails, in this case at about 5,600 newtons. So far, only the advantages of adhesive bonds have been explained. But there is a significant disadvantage when considering the reuse of composite parts. In contrast to mechanical fasteners such as screws and rivets, adhesive bonds are not separable. After gluing, the parts can no longer be separated without damaging them. In the project Fibre Reuse, Invent investigates a solution of separating adhesive joints. This is how we can achieve the project's target of developing reusable designs and remanufacturing technologies. Invent uses thermally expandable particles, or TEPs, mixed into the adhesive, therefore making the separation of the parts possible. The TEPs are thermoplastic particles with encapsulated gas. The diameter of these particles is 10 to 15 micrometers. At the activation temperature, the shell softens and the gas expands drastically. The shell expands to more than 35 micrometers, whereby the adhesive bond will be destroyed. Using this technology, the mechanical requirements when in service are still maintained, 
and there will be no accidental debonding of the joint. A fast and simple debonding is activated when required and there is a guarantee that the parts are not damaged when separated. The manufacturing of tensile shear samples, including TEPs, is nearly the same as the previously explained process. It is important to know which quantity of TEPs is necessary for an expansion at a certain temperature. The appropriate quantity of TEPs is mixed into the prepared adhesive. Thus, in addition to the two components of the adhesive, a third will be added. The other steps of manufacturing remain the same applying the adhesive, pressing the parts together and finally curing. So far, the theoretical function of TEPs and the production of samples has been explained. But what does the separation process look like in reality? For the separation of the samples, they can simply be put in an oven. After setting the correct temperature, about 125 degrees Celsius, the samples are exposed to the heat. After a few minutes, the adhesive is completely heated and the samples are removed from the oven. Now, only a small force is required to separate the composite parts from each other. A glass fibre reinforced plastic sports car seat is used to demonstrate this technology on a project related use case. Four metallic fastener elements are glued onto the seat shell. Two fasteners are bonded with the TEPs included. Two fasteners are bonded without the additional particles. After heating, the joints which are joined with TEPs can be easily removed by hand. In contrast to this, it is not possible to remove the joints bonded without TEPs by hand. To remove these fasteners, auxiliary tools such as levers or even a mechanical process is necessary. In conclusion, by simply adding TEPs to an adhesive mixture, the composite parts are undamaged and therefore reusable when separated.